Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Spyderco Ikuchi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it is a flipper tab, uh, well, a flipper spider co with the uh, compression like You can see there I had a, a little bit of trouble with that flipper tab. We'll talk about that here in a sec. Thank you so much to Cody for sending this in. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. Also, please make sure to follow me on Instagram and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. Overall length of the Spyderco Ikuchi. Ikuchi. I have no idea. Seven and a half inches. Blade length coming in at about three and a quarter. And cutting edge about three and an eighth. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. There you go. How about the Rat 2? There you go. Closer to the size of the Rat 2. And the height, right? The presence is closer uh, to the Rat too. Such a pretentious way to say that, sorry. But I mean, how else am I going to say it, right? Uh, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and pair of three? Here's some, you know, for the Spyderco people out there watching. Um, yeah, so it's actually uh, really close to the size of the uh, Spyderco pair of three. You just have way, way more cutting edge uh, because of the way that they did this. And last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And its little brother, the uh, Mini Grip, uh, or Mini Griptilian. Um, so there, right in between. How about carry profile up against the Spider Coat Pair of Three? Let's go ahead and put that away. Thickness. It is slightly, ever so slightly thinner than the Spider Coat Pair of Three. Length and height. This is where carry profile really plays in favor of the Akuchi. Uh, yeah, lengthwise, it's about the same as the Pair of Three, and is nowhere near as tall. This is a you know, it's 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 like a, th a thick pen, right? I mean, this is a not going to be a cumbersome object. Um, so a little bit wider than some people might prefer, but still not as thick as the Spyderco Pair of Three. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade stock thickness, which I'm going to have to do with a knife like this because I can't get a hold of it while it's closed. The uh, the blade closes completely into the handle. Blade stock thickness coming in at. Oh, yeah, 95 thousandths. Not a thick blade at all, and it's fully flat ground. So that's cool. Um, hardware check. Let me get out my tools. My tools are extremely inexpensive and extremely recommendable, and you can find them right down in the description once again because I put those links back down in there. Because you know what? At this point, <laughs> I'm just going to link what I want to link. <laughs> wink, wink. I sound like Dr. Seuss. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's not a T10. Oh my gosh, focus. Uh, there we go. There we go. T8. Uh, T8 on the pivot. And I'm not even going to check these. These are going to be T6, right? Nah. Um, we got a T8 for the pocket clip screw back here. Um, you know, so that's great. And it's pretty minimal, right? This isn't going to be difficult to take apart. Just be careful with those T6 screws. All right. Let's take a look at the inside, get out my flashlight. You can also get my flashlight right down in the description, um, which is great. The inside of this has been uh, milled out for weight reduction, so that's nice. Just a little bit there. And let's go ahead and weigh it. I'm going to guess this knife weighs just a, it's somewhere between 2.75 and three and a quarter. Probably should turn it on first. Oh no, it's less than that, 2.43. Yeah, so the ratios on this guy are... Wow, very, very good. This is what I would consider to be ultra lightweight, anything under three ounces. So there you go. Ratio snobs unite. Uh, that's an easy knife to carry. Very cool. So um, we have uh, interesting, right? Spyderco loves to do weird stuff, but usually it's weird in the, you know, sort of wounded pelican uh, department, right? And lots of weird lines. This is straight. Where is this manufactured? This is manufactured in Taichung, Taiwan. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Taichung, Taiwan uh, Spyderco 
manufacturing area seems to really have their fit and finish down. These are very excellent, and many will say it's, they're actually better uh, in overall fit and finish and quality than the U.S. Spider Coast. I love my U.S. Spider Coast, but I found that to be largely true. Uh, these are very, very good, and this uh, model is no exception. You have a wide amount of real estate to get a hold of this guy, which is nice. You have so much freedom, though, that it's not. there's no clear indication exactly where you're supposed to lock in. There's a little bit of jimping right here, which will kind of, kind of not really, right? But it's comfortable. You'll feel the wire clip, but it's that's about it. You can feel it because it's nicely rounded off. So you might, you know, there's a chance you'll drop this or possibly slip up on the edge because there is nothing to stop you from moving around right here. Uh, not a, not a hand melt or anything like that. I mean, this is kind of a, a C plus to a B minus in the ergonomics department, but it is, you know, it's not like a, oh, it's because it's uncomfortable. No, it's just, you have so much freedom. There's no clear spot where you're supposed to lock in, but considering where you would be using this and what you would be using it for, which is light EDC related stuff. Do you really need to lock in that hard? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, so maybe that's okay, right? Um, this area back here is a little bit weird. In fact, I mean, it's kind of weird is the name of the game of this whole profile. Look at this. I like this. See the two holes. That's neat. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know what purpose there is, right? I mean, if you need, you know, maybe if you need to uh, size a piece of yarn, you can just run the yarn through there. And there you go, right? <laughs> it's kind of cool though, right? Uh, the, uh, the scales are that peel ply carbon fiber stuff, which means there's a very, very thin layer of carbon fiber. And then underneath it's G10. It's like I always say, make it G10 and charge us less or make it all carbon fiber, like the Kapara, which is also made in Taichung, Taiwan. I don't like this stuff. It is, it is nicely textured though. Um, so that's fine and it'll hold up. It's plenty durable. This is a compression lock. And the thing that I like about it is most compression lock flippers through Spyderco have that awkward where you move the compression lock and the flipper tab comes around and it wants to poke your finger. So you have to get your finger out of the way really quickly. But if you can see how they do that, the flipper tab actually comes back around in front or above the stop pin, which is cool. Um, it is a very non-obtrusive flipper as well. It's just sort of like a gear wheel. And at times I'll slip off of it. You know, fortunately the area where you land isn't too aggressive, but if you get, you get it down and you're good. Um, and then you, it's, it's kind of fun to play with because the flipper thing, it's not really a flipper. It's just like a traction wheel. It works all right. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. And I'll tell you after about 10 flips in a row, you're going to be like, Yay, you know, because of how that it, but it does work. And that's neat because traditionally Spyderco flippers don't really work all that well. You can also do this, you know, kind of with the left hand, but then here's the problem, especially if you're left-handed. This is a right-handed compression lock. And because of how narrow the frame is, you really have to make sure you've got a hold of it when you go to uh, disengage that, um, that compression lock and lefties you're probably using your thumb to do that, which means you're you're holding it like this. It's not optimal. So the frame is super duper narrow and the scales are super narrow. So it, you have a less than optimal purchase on it when you're going to disengage it. I would I would say that this type of knife is more often dropped than, you know, a narrow knife is, you know, especially one that's got the deployment set up like this is more often dropped than, a, say, a Spyderco PM2 with a compression lock because you've got more surface area to get a good grip on it, right? Silly little things that only a knife reviewer is going to point out, but it's true. Or at least I take myself seriously enough to assume that it's true. <laughs> Ah, okay, what's the blade steel? Uh, S30V, which is fine, especially considering the price, which we're going to talk about. Um, the uh, blade is this sort of trailing point, very super duper pokey, but uh, not super durable out of the tip. So it will do what it is designed to do. It will poke or breach, and uh, the edge is nice and thin, so it will absolutely slice. You can see there what it tapers down to. Yeah, it's nice. Now, this isn't an open L, but yeah, it's going to do, you know, your... Your daily EDC stuff, right? That's what it's designed to do. Can you engage the, uh, can you engage the hole? Oh man, how many times have I said that in a Spyderco review and then just totally not realized what I was saying? 
probably every Spyderco review. No, you can't because the blade, you know, falls completely into the handle, which is honestly kind of neat. A lot of times when you get a knife like this where it's very nearly one to one, or at least like how it, you know, the ratio, like how it falls into, it, usually you can touch the blade back here and that's a downside of that design aesthetic choice, but you cannot touch that blade. So that's pretty cool. Um, moving on here, we have a couple of standoffs. Oh, by the way, this does run on phosphor bronze, which is cool because the action is, wow, super smooth, really nice. <laughs> if we could have that type of action on every knife that, had, that that used phosphor bronze, we wouldn't need bearings because phosphor bronze is better for working in an environment that's dirty or dusty because it keeps all the crap out of your knife, which is cool. We uh, have three standoffs back here. We have these two more decorative ones um, that are also, you know, points of integrity for the knife. And then you have this one back here that's just stabilizing between the, it's for, it's a place for the screw to go um, for the pocket clip, right? Um, and the, the knife's going to carry incredibly deep. The only thing that's going to be sticking up out of your pocket is that right there, which is fine. The wire clip, this is one of those designs where the wire clip actually looks pretty good on because of the body, right? Um, this is cool. This uh, is kind of, it's kind of like a gentlemanly, a tactical gentlemanly office slash cocktail party carry spider coat. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because it's an odd shape. Um, so, you know, this isn't going to, this knife isn't going to like change your life in an amazing way. Um, but here's the cool thing. The price on it is, uh, oh, did we talk about walk up? Hang on. People nail biting for the price, I'm sure. Uh, absolutely solid. And it is centered. So that's great. The price on this guy is 140 bucks. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Most of the Spyderco Taichung tai Taiwan stuff is like 180 plus, right? Not everything, but there's a lot of stuff in there. I shouldn't say that. It's not always 180 plus. It's like 160 plus. 140? That's pretty good. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, so if you're, uh, you know, the type of person who really needs to like feel an ergonomic masterpiece when you pick up a knife, it's probably isn't going to be for you, but uh, it's also not terrible. It's just, that's the biggest, you know, because of the design, it, it's just kind of blah, right? You're just holding on to an awkwardly shaped sort of, the whole thing looks like a mosquito. <laughs> that's, doesn't it? It looks like a mosquito where right? you just add the wings and then... That's what it reminds me of. Um, the frame is narrow, uh, so you got to be careful uh, about holding on to it when you are disengaging that um, compression lock because you're not you're not in a great position. You cannot do the typical Spyderco flippy sort of reverse flick. You can't do that with this knife, right? Which is the reason a lot of people pick up Spydercos. But this is pretty different, even for Spyderco. So maybe the people who are interested are not interested in traditional Spyderco knives. Um, this is pretty good. It's, it's, it's neat to see, um, a, uh, Spyderco, um, flipper that actually works and doesn't come around and touch your finger, right? And then bounce back out. It's kind of neat. You can just hold it and it's going to drop into place. I mean, it is bouncing back out. I'm saying it doesn't bounce off. The flipper tab doesn't bounce back off of your finger. You can get the timing down. There you go. But, uh, yeah, so this is neat. It's not my favorite thing in the whole world. Personally, it's not a knife that I would own. But it's good all the way around. I mean, it's 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 a recommendable knife, especially at the price. You know, had they wanted 180 for this, I'd have been like, nah. 140, yeah, knock yourself out. It's pretty cool. I'll be linking it right down below. I should have said that the, at the beginning. This will be linked right down below. You can absolutely pick this knife up. I think that's gonna be pretty much it. Wow, this was a quick uh, this was a quick review. Thanks again. To the gentleman who sent this in for review, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.